All right, it's the biggest game of the week. It's maybe the biggest game of the season. Georgia going to Alabama, so we had to reach out to the one, the only, Mr. Rusty Manziel, Dogs HQ. Uh, how's it going, Rusty? I'm, I'm alive, man. I'm uh, right now. <laughs> I don't get sponsored by Celsius, but they're missing a damn good opportunity. I can tell you that right now because I am. I got a straight IV of Celsius. It feels like this week right now. So it's. Yeah, we're in the same boat. We're fueled by Cracker Barrel, but they they don't even sponsor us. I mean, what? Anyway. I mean, what? I mean, can you find a better <laughs> representation than Chain? Like, <laughs> I mean, my God, Cracker Barrel step. I tell you what, I'm a boycott. I tell you right now, right? I am boycotting <laughs> Cracker Barrel until they reach out and get a deal done with Shane. Period. So won't see me in. Well, what we need to do, Shane needs to make the same vow, and their stock is going to plummet, and then we'll finally get somewhere. That's right. That's right. I mean, <laughs> I mean, on cousin man. I mean, <laughs> hey, so I'm a loyal listener to the Georgia show. Yeah, man. So I already know. I already cut to the chase because you've already, if you're not listening, let me recommend it right now. If you're not listening to the dog, uh, the Georgia show, go subscribe to Dogs HQ. Mm -hmm. But I listen religiously, and Thank Rusty's you. already made his pick. Mm -hmm. Georgia's winning this game. Tell us why Georgia's winning this game. Uh, I just, I trust a few things in this game. Um, obviously, it's going to be close. I, I don't, I'm not like ultra confident, but. I have to pick one and I kind of try to lay things out. I, I think Georgia in a, in a few areas, I kind of like them a little bit more. And, and one particular thing I, I, I looked at deep into this game, Alabama secondary, you know, and when you start looking at uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry and Terry and Arnold and Caleb Downs, and those guys aren't there and doesn't mean they don't have really good players there, but it's almost like the Georgia wide receiver group. You know, Georgia don't have Brock Bowers. They don't have Lab McConkey. They don't have those guys. And they're not coming back. And it doesn't mean they don't have good players. But you're talking about elite NFL guys. I have some questions about Alabama's secondary kind of in the back end. Nobody's really tested them yet. So I really kind of like that matchup of Georgia's, even their wide receivers. And in particular, their, I think Oscar Delp is a guy that may not get enough mention. But Oscar Delp against their safeties is kind of right now one of those things I think they're going to get a couple of chunk plays out of. It's going to come down to one of those. I mean, it comes down to two or three explosives, and who can do that? So you kind of have to separate, kind of have to look in your knowledge, and that's kind of what one of the things I, I like from the Georgia perspective is, is the Georgia uh, skill players against particularly the safeties and nickels of Alabama. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of that Georgia offense, though, can, can you put your finger on the main reasons? Mm. I, I don't know if struggle's the right word, but oh, just yeah. gotten off to a, sl a slow start. Why have they gotten off to such a slow start? I think they're missing key pieces, and they're trying to have to find out who are those guys. You know what I mean? It's almost like you go get a new set of golf clubs, and you got to play a couple of rounds where you find out what you're, hit <laughs> what you're hitting well. You know what I mean? Just because you went yeah. and bought a brand new set of clubs, I mean, you're just going to tear it up. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, they've got new pieces in there and they got guys that are trying to figure out and, you know, for whatever reason that that Kentucky game did not look great. Uh, they found a way to win. It was a perfect recipe for Georgia going up there and kind of wetting the bed type deal because Kentucky got embarrassed and they were a better team than that. Uh, they got embarrassed by South Carolina and then you got the number one team in the country and it's a 24 point spread and they got some, especially their front four, they got some dudes. And uh, they gave Georgia some fits. And, and and I'll say this, coming off that game and a bye week, you don't think that was like a good situation for Kirby Smart. You want to win the game. You want to play better. But he had Georgia's attention as soon as they landed in Athens. You guys want to watch this game tape and think we're not going to work hard for two weeks? Uh, it's kind of those situations there. So, you know, I, I, think, I think Beck, for whatever reason, was kind of hesitant on driving the ball down the field. He checked it down a good bit. And I think K Kentucky played a lot of zone against him. And that's not something I've seen out of him. You know, he's got a big time arm, but for whatever reason, you lose Tate Rattledge, you know, you got to, you're sitting there, there's a lot of small things in there. You know, some protection calls I heard weren't exactly right, too. You got a new center you're breaking in. So, uh, who Jared Wilson's a hell of a player, but you know, you, you take Cedric Van Pran out of there, who's a two year starter, didn't miss, you know, he, he was a, a trusted guy. So I think when you look at Jared Wilson, you know, I, I think some of these young and tier guys, next thing you know, Jared Wilson doesn't have Tate Rattledge, who's a, a, a fifth year senior beside him, and he can help make calls. So there's some small things that can lead to a result like that. But you got to say, Mike, at the end of the day, Georgia goes up and wins that game, and now you move on because. For whatever reason, Georgia seems to have one of those uh, every year. Uh, could that be the one? Mm -hmm. and, and what do you think would be 
more critical to Georgia winning in this game? Would it be Carson Beck having a really good performance, but his best performance of the season, or Georgia having their best performance rushing the football? Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of curious to hear no, your answer. It's got to be, be Carson Beck because I'm telling you, Alabama's front seven is legit. Alabama's front seven is Alabama. You see those dudes, and they don't look any different than Georgia dudes. Like their front seven, and again. I'm not uh, kind of saying their secondary is in trouble. I'm saying I got questions, and we're going to find out. And But their front seven, I got no questions about. The, those guys, Tim Smith is a guy that Georgia recruited heavily. LT Overton, the transfer from Texas A&M, many people thought he was the number one player in the country in his class. He's from Milton, Georgia. Uh, I covered him in high school. I mean, he is coming on. He is a disruptor. He's a vi- you know, violent hands. He's got all those things you look for, you know, a defensive lineman. So – uh, it's got to be a Carson Beck. Like Carson Beck has got to be that guy that many people think he is. He's had some really good games. He lost one game against Alabama. Uh, didn't play his great game. Didn't play his best game. I certainly don't think it was so much on him in that SEC championship last year. But if you're Carson Beck and you want to create uh, your history at Georgia, this is one of those you've got to win. You've got to win one of these big games in front of everybody. And, um, uh, I certainly think the quarterback play on both sides of this game is going to be huge in the in the uh, outcome result. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and to your point, I mean, it's kind of easy to remember the games Alabama lost because there's only been about five in, in 10 years seemingly, yeah. but it, it's Joe Burrow, it's Johnny Manziel, it's Hennon Hooker, it's Trevor Lawrence. It's, it's these big-time players stepping up when they need it. Absolutely. It's a quarterback that has their best game. And, and for years, it took – what I would call a uh, you know a, a talent equalizer to like you would go in there and not many teams if any maybe the LSU team is the only one that walked in there with probably a better top sixty roster uh, versus Alabama and nobody kind of knew that until LSU got loose you know later that year and that night but uh, you know, a player like that and a performance you can go back to Steven Garcia. The day he played his ass off again and then an upset South Carolina beat Alabama. He played the game of his life. You know what I mean? So I don't think right. Carson Beck has to play the game of his life, but I think he has to play a really good game. And I think he has to make some key throws and some tight windows and create some explosive plays against some guys. He's going to have to do that because I'm not real sure how much Georgia is going to be able to run the football to kind of take that game over. I don't think this is one of those ones where you're going to grind Alabama into the ground. You're going to have to beat them. You're going to have to outscore them in some explosives. I saw, I've seen Georgia win these types of games. You go back and look at Oklahoma. They had to outscore Oklahoma in the Rose Bowl. They had to outscore the, one of the best defenses in the history of college football on paper. When you go back and look at the starting 11 and the draft picks there in that Ohio State game, Georgia still – had to win a shootout. So those games like that are going to come up, and Carson Beck is going to be big uh, if Georgia can win these. Yeah, good call on Steven Garcia. I mean, he basically retired after that, and uh, he's still a legend because yeah. he beat them. You know what? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> hey, I caught two passes in the state semifinals. I still talk about it. You know what I mean? So Steven Garcia went in there. He beat Alabama. So, you know, you take that to the grave, and I'm going to take my two catches in the state semis to the grave with me. So. <laughs> All right, so, we're, hey, we're recording this on Wednesday afternoon. What, what's the latest on Michael Williams? Do you think he'll, he'll play in this I game? I think he's going to go. You know, he's certainly not going to be 100%. Uh, just what we've heard earlier in the week, he – Actually, Monday, we reported on Dogs HQ that he was taped up. He was fully padded, trying to give it a go. And I think that uh, I think he's going to play. I'm, I don't know how much he's going to play, uh, but I think he's going to give it a go. And, and listen, you know, a 60, 75 percent Michael Williams. Is, there's a lot of people uh, that predicted him. It could possibly be a top five pick. So, you know, if I would have told you, Mike, in August that George is going to Alabama and, and may not have Michael Williams and may not have – and that's certainly not going to have Tate Rattledge, you know, that was two of their first-team All-American selections. So, not good, but, you know, I think Michael is going to get back. It's just how much he can handle and how effective he will be. Right. Well, let's assume he is effective. Mm-hmm. What Which matchup are you more interested in seeing, Michael Williams versus Caden Proctor uh-huh. or – Ryan Williams against Malachi Starks, Ooh. KJ Bolden and company. I mean, th- th- this is big boy football this here. Big boy football. That's what I said this morning. The football nerd in me loves this because <laughs> I-, I saw Ryan Williams at Under Armour camp last February, and I looked at Charles Power, our own three uh, recruiting director, who does all our rankings, and I said, Charles, that's the easiest I think I've ever seen a kid 
just take over a camp and how smooth he was. And this was the best against the best. I mean, he's running by dudes, and he made it look effortless. And, and hell, he's made it look effortless so far. You know, so you look at K.J. Bold, who's a five-star. You look at Malachi Starks, who's a five-star. I'm not sure how much those guys are going to be matched up on them, but you look at Julian Humphrey, who was a massive recruit. You look at Dalen Everett, who some people, I think he was a five-star for a couple of different uh, recruiting services at corner. So you look at those guys, and this is the matchups you want to see. I and mean, this is the best team Ryan Williams has played, and, and I think he's certainly going to be a superstar. I mean, he is going to be a superstar at Alabama. Uh, he's off to a great start, but this is the best defense he's played. He's not going to be able to just run by people, uh, but when he is open, you know, Milrow has to hit him and take advantage of those situations. And one thing I'll say about Jalen Milrow, Dude, his deep ball accuracy has been spot on, especially this year. He threw a couple of balls in that Wisconsin game that were absolutely perfect, and that scares you to death if you're facing him. Mm -hmm. uh, I, know, I know there's a lot of football to be played, Rusty, but how confident are you that the winner of Saturday's game will make the SEC championship? Ooh, well, that's I mean, that's tough, man, because Georgia's got damn murder rope. I mean, I'm not going to say, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, if Georgia wins this game, you know, you got a you got an Auburn team that's desperate coming to town next week. They doesn't, they doesn't look great, but damn, Auburn's another one of those teams that always plays Georgia tough. But you got to go to Texas. You got to go to Ole Miss. And I, damn, I've turned around, and you and Shane have got Tennessee turned around. <laughs> uh, you know, Cracker Barrel and Shane have got Tennessee into a top five team in America. So, you know, uh, but but Georgia, that's not a guarantee, man. If Alabama wins this game, I would I would be uh, to bet on them to be in it somehow because this is a huge game because you know their schedules just be straight. It's not as difficult as Georgia. Georgia still got a lot of meat left on the bone, man. They got a lot of meat left on the bone, but need to win this one because of playoff scenarios and those types of things. It's 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 going to be ironic, Mike, if Georgia wins this game because Georgia fans are going to be the biggest Clemson and biggest Alabama fans the rest of the year. Like, come on, Dabo, and come on, DeBoer. Y'all win them all, which is crazy. If, let's say, Georgia does win in Tuscaloosa, do they – do they officially put Alabama in their rearview mirror in the no. terms of? I I think most people already already think Georgia is the, is the premier program in the country. Two national championships. I I don't know. I I think all there's there's so much pressure on the board to keep us up. If if they if they start losing games like this, mm -hmm. I'm telling you. I mean, it's gonna it'll be slow, but it'll be steady. Yeah. Fans are fans are gonna turn on him. There. Here's the thing I think about Alabama and Georgia. And there's both sides of this. If Kirby Smart loses this game, you know the narrative. He can't beat Alabama. Right. Every, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be on. And and rightfully so. About If Georgia loses this game, Mike, that'll be nine out of the last ten. They lost eight out of the last nine. So you, you've got to kind of put that together. But you look at Kalen DeBoer on his side. This is his first SEC game. <laughs> man, the man gets Georgia <laughs> for his first SEC game at home. You know what I mean? And. Uh, this is not something that Nick Saban didn't do a lot. He didn't lose a lot at home. He especially didn't lose much to Georgia. So uh, there's a lot of pressure on both sides of that. This is what I say about those, Mike. This is big boy ball, and both of those guys on the first of the month get a big boy check. So, yeah. you know, that that comes with it. You know what I mean? I would love to see the deposit on some of these guys. I just want to see a pay stub. <laughs> like, what's the, what's the pay stub look like, you know, for the first of the month to some of these guys? So, uh, it, there's a lot of different narratives for both fan bases. I'll be honest with you, man, for a billion reasons, Georgia needs to win this game. I mean, this is not something they win and you're automatically going to get into the playoff or automatically – it's not. But they have got to get this stigma of not beating Alabama, losing close games to Alabama. They have got to kind of put some breaks on that. But I am confident in this. The loser of this game, it does not matter because neither one of these teams with their rosters – and the way the board's already recruiting, neither one of these teams are going anywhere anytime soon. They're going to be a problem every time you lock up and play Alabama or Georgia. Mm -hmm. All right, last question for you, Rusty. Really appreciate your time. Yeah, this man. is a, a question straight from Cousin Shane. Yes, sir. What is a go-to order for Rusty Manziel over at Bojangles? Oh, man. So I worked at Bojangles. I think I've told you. I worked at Bojangles from the ninth grade to the senior in high school. So I know all the samples. It has to be fresh. You know, it has to be fresh. You know what I mean? But that Sunday morning, about 1030 in the morning, Sunday morning, which is the busiest time for Bojangles, 9 to 12 on Sunday is the busiest time. Trust me, I've got all the data. That <laughs> Sunday morning, 
10 30 a.m chicken biscuit combo if the fries are fresh with extra seasoning there's been many a days I've been through there with a Gatorade and needing a chicken biscuit and some fries. <laughs> so I think that I think that that Cajun fillet biscuit and the fries with the seasoning, if they're done right, oh dude, I mean like sign me up. I mean I don't know. <laughs> I, I sure hope one day that I get through those gates and they go, you know what, man, sell Bojangles is down the street on the left, so I'll, I'll be good to go. I can I can assure you, Shane is hungry just listening to this. <laughs> All right, uh, you got any deals over there right now? Yeah, Dogs man, we HQ? do. This, this, this week, man, we got a great deal. It's uh, 50% off an annual subscription. It's uh, promo code Go Dogs, and I think that comes out to like $4.99 a month, which is, man, you, you can't even get a Cajun biscuit for $4.99 a month, and you're going to get 30 <laughs> days of Rusty Mansell and Jake Rowe and all of our guys. So it's been really good, man. Um, you know, it's been great. I've uh, had to learn to adjust, you know, for – 13 years, I kind of was on my own. And for 24-7, I was just covering recruiting for Georgia and covering the state of Georgia. But now I'm a co-owner of a site and trying to learn to, to manage people and manage their expectations. But it's been really good, and we appreciate everybody, man. And uh, I'm just happy for you guys, too, man. I I said my, my mom loves y'all. I'm telling you now. My mom, <laughs> God, she will – the minute that she, I hadn't even told my mom I'm on SEC mic this week. <laughs> Love and, and prayers to those people as we record this. My mom lives down in Pensacola, but uh, my high school football coach, Lynn Honeycutt, is somebody who was very influential in my life. Uh, he's retired. He owns a, a property down in Apalachicola. So all these people that are about to go through this, man, prayers to everybody on, on that coast and, and an entire um, entire pathway. This looks very, very scary. So you know, kind of watching, I'm recording you and I got weather channel on behind you here, just trying to make sure that these people stay safe and, and uh, we'll get through this thing. 